Hello everyone and welcome to Word on the Street. My name is Cyrilda Summers McGee and I'm the founder and CEO of Workplace Change, which is a human resources change management and diversity, equity and inclusion firm based in the Pacific Northwest, but doing work all over the nation. So let's get to my perspective on a few different topics. Word on the street is that Deloitte has just presented some new information about how members of the LGBTQ plus community are experiencing the workplace, coming back inside the workplace. And I wanna jump into some of these figures, so let's get to it. All right, so Deloitte in spring 2023 issued a report that said more than four out of 10 LGBTQ plus people have experienced non-inclusive behavior in a work context. Here's some more detail from this report. Deloitte surveyed 5,400 employees. They were non-Deloitte employees, uh, and they were folks who identified as being members of the LGBTQ plus community who worked in various sectors across the globe, so not just the US, okay? 61% of respondents said they had experienced non-inclusive behavior in a physical workplace, such as an office or a factory, compared to 25% who said they'd experienced them while working virtually or online. Interesting, right? Okay. Also, folks said that they had a lot of anxiety and stress about returning into the office because of some of the com some of the comments that people provided. These comments were sexual in nature. They were hostile in nature. They were, you know, anti-LGBTQ plus in nature at different times. And this is from people who identified as being members of the LGBTQ plus community, as well as being out. So openly members of that community. All right, in addition, Deloitte referenced some additional data. A study was published by Fortune Forum in 2021 or 2022 that found that 86% of the Hispanic or Latin community, these are knowledge workers, and 81% of Asian Americans and African American knowledge workers preferred hybrid over fully remote working arrangements compared to 75% of white knowledge workers, all right? So, you know, about 15 or so percent um, higher percentage of folks who are members of the Latin, Asian, as well as the black community are more interested in being in a hybrid environment. But here was the primary reason why. They felt a greater sense of belonging being at home in comparison to being in the work environment. This is interesting data, right? This is interesting data because I know that um, Folks are interested in having people come back into the workplace. Like there is definitely a trend that's happening. And we've talked about this trend on several word on the streets, right? Folks are requiring people to come back into the office in a hybrid environment, etc. But here's my thing. If you're going to require folks to come back into the office, and I do believe that greater bonding happens when people are working in the office. We work with a lot of tension and conflict in, workplace, in, in, in workplaces across America. When folks are working virtually, there's a lot less trust. There's a lot um, more nitpicking. There's a lot less tolerance and patience with one another. So I definitely understand the, the attraction for having folks come back into the workplace. But if you're gonna have people come back into the workplace, you've gotta make sure that workplace is safe. You've gotta make sure that workplace is inclusive. We've got data here that shows that basically everyone except for cisgender, heterosexual, white men and women who identify as such are struggling with being in the workplace. They feel othered. They feel like it's not safe. They feel like it's not an inclusive environment. They feel like the system is rigged. They feel like things are unfair. What are you employers going to do about that? You cannot just require people to come back into the workplace and not do the work to change the environment in which they are working, right? That's your job as management, as leadership. You get to call people back, but you also have the responsibility, and in some cases, the burden to help get people to a place where they feel safe inside your organization and they feel valued and respected. If that's not happening, you need to get on top of it and do something about it. You should conduct your own workplace surveys, your own inclusion surveys. You should be asking for focus groups and having conversations with your workforce about coming back into the workplace. This is the work you have to do to get things back on track, to make people feel like it's a, work, a welcoming and inclusive environment. So Deloitte has a survey. They've got some, 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 some data, some receipts, saying that people don't feel safe inside the workplace. Okay, we know this now. That's a data point. 
Now the question for you is, what are you going to do to make sure your environment doesn't fall into that exact same rut? Thanks for watching this issue of Word on the Street. And I hope you jump into the conversation and talk about what your organization is doing to try to make sure your workplace is more inclusive now and today than it ever was in the past. There's work to be done, and we all have to do our part to make these work environments a better environment. I'll see you at the next Word on the Street. Thanks for watching.